we just opened up a merch shop. If you want stickers or t-shirts, hit up the store tab on our YouTube channel and find something you like. And as always, come join us in our Discord server to chat with us about this jet. We'd love to have you, and the link is in the description. Check it out, guys. We've got the Freewing 90 millimeter Eurofighter. This thing is super sweet. Since the last time we flew it, we went ahead and added some weight to the back of the tail. I can't take the tail off and show you, but there's a channel that I cut right into here. Uh, it moves about 28 grams of weight, otherwise known as about one ounce of weight for you guys using Freedom units to get the center of gravity shifted a bit further back. So if I'm to hold this plane upside down, we are flying with an SMC 4400 high voltage pack. We are currently balancing slightly nose down where my middle finger is. So in relation to the center of gravity, you kind of have a general idea. It's about 50 millimeters back from where it comes stock, recommend it. We have not gotten the rclightsystems.com uh, channel expander in yet, so we're still stuck with the subpar gear dropping system, which takes 10 years to drop and go back up. But for the time being, it's still flyable. It's pretty damn good, and I think you guys are gonna like it. So let's go ahead and cut right to the point and take it on up in the sky. Okay, let's get her lined up and ready to go. We're in our takeoff mode, so the canards move more than the elevons. Here we go. right into a loaded roll. Uh, at this center of gravity, this thing is intense. It's not as good as I was hoping it would be. It definitely does not compare with Rafal so far, but we'll find out pretty soon what it is capable of. It does do knife edge pretty well. Look at the way it flips over itself. With a little bit of rudder going into those loaded rolls, it's actually really agile. It does loaded rolls better than Rafal does so far. I can't wait to pit these things against each other. Today would have been perfect for it, I think. If not for the fact that the weather is a bit on the weird side, uh, just no clouds. And I didn't want to have focusing issues and, and not have you guys see how agile these things are in the sky. There's an element of some of this that's missing when you're flying on a blue sky. Let's bring her in for a high alpha pass. The jet is so forgiving, very easy to fly. At the center of gravity, it almost holds its own nose up for a high alpha pass. I'm sure my wife's having a real easy time keeping up with it right now. It might have been a little harder earlier. But for now, it's not too bad because it's basically flying itself. I only have to hold the stick a little bit and it comes right out of it. Let's turn it back around. This is an SMC 4400 pack, guys, by the way. 75C pack. There we go. Kind of trying to concentrate. I don't want to talk too much and screw up and go in the drink here. I will say, I think it does a better job of high alpha than Rafal. Um, although Rafal feels a little more controllable, it is definitely more agile. It is significantly easier to get yourself into trouble with Rafal because of the, um, the ability to put it into tail heaviness with almost no work. Load it roll. The way it does those loaded rolls is insanely good. We're gonna do another knife edge pass. Three, two, one. I just love the loaded rolls this thing can do. Let's put it into a quick, well, as quick as the landing gear will let me, put it into a quick touch and go. Hey, there's some jet contrails. You probably got to see it going somewhere in the sky for a change. Uh, without any reference, it's kind of hard to tell what these planes are doing at this time of year with the clouds being what they are. Do a quick touch and go, and we'll bring it back up. Go back around. Run a touch and go from the other direction now, and then bring it in and land it. You guys really don't have to do all that much to land this jet. Hold the nose up a little bit. Use a little bit of rudder to steer it. Some contrary aileron. You should have no problems at all. This thing almost lands itself. Uh, obviously you have to pilot it, but you know, it's not hard to do. All right. I think we got about three and a half to four minutes of flight out of it. We're gonna go ahead and turn it around. Drop the brake. Brake's mostly just aesthetic. I don't think it actually does that much. Although it does seem to help stabilize it a little bit. Cannot break 
Turn on air brakes dropped. And there we go. Pretty good deal so far. I still love this jet. The way it handles is so, it's sublime. It's so good. It's got a very big presence to it in the sky. Robust gear that can handle going off road a bit if you need to. Um, there's just so many good things you can say about it. One thing I did uh, neglect to mention that I changed out was putting high-tech D85 MG servos. They've been into the uh, Elevons. They've been sitting in my house for a bit. I hadn't done anything with them ever since my F-22 crash, and I figured, well, I'm gonna rebuild that anyway, but I'll get new servos for it. In the meantime, let's get her up. Oh yeah, best plot, uh, spot to take off is right there. So we're gonna put this thing into a little bit more of an agility trial. Let's see how agile this jet can be today. Look at the way it spins over. Trimming those canards down a bit. They actually need to be trimmed down. There we go. Now it's handling better. It was kind of pitching up constantly on me. The Eurofighter does an exceptional job of loaded rolls. That rudder is incredibly effective. I love how it looks and flies. Um, hopefully I can get it to be as agile as Rafal. I think I have to go further back on the CG. We're at 50 millimeters right now. And it's just not as agile as I want it to be. I could make those loaded rolls even tighter. But I'm kind of wary about where the plane's gonna go. I'm still learning this jet, haven't flown it in two weeks. Uh, I have so many other planes I have to fly. I don't get to fly my free wing stuff as much as I want to. There you go, that's a loaded roll. How'd that look, dear? Looked okay. Yeah, this thing, once it gets into a loaded roll, it is just so, it's perfection. I wish the Rafal could do it as good as this one can. This little Death Dorito does a good job, look at it go. That is a series of loaded rolls, and that is awesome. Gear down. We're gonna wait 10 years for the gear to come out. We'll do one more quick pass until the gear actually come out, do some touch and goes with this thing. Again, uh, we will give you guys a quick landing tutorial with this jet. You just have to hold the nose up on the approach. There's not a whole lot to it. Hold some throttle there, I can see the landing lights. Uh, hold the throttle as you pull the nose up. Steer with the rudder. Use your landing or your uh, nav lights for guidance if you're still new to this. So you know when a light is green, you can push to the right. When it's red, you can push to the left. So if you see it coming at you and you see green, you can push to the right or to the, or to the right. And when you see it coming at you and it's red, you can push to the left. Uh, so like right now, left is uh, to my right, but my stick is left, obviously. So I just push to the left to correct for it. It takes a bit of getting used to. If you're not used to that kind of thing, Let's try a slower approach. For those of you guys who are still kind of wondering, how does this thing handle? Is it as good as the version two? It's definitely heavier than version two, but I think we can get it to be a little slower. That's where I'm gonna get in trouble right here, but I think we'll be okay. But actually, it is really good like that. I'm impressed at how well it held that angle of attack coming in. The wiggle waggle was me kind of overcompensating with rudder. Strangely enough, it's still pretty effective even with the nose pointed up like that. That's not really common for these Delta jets, you would think. Yeah, man, this is good stuff. So like really just hold the nose up, use some throttle to control your descent because your throttle actually becomes your altitude control on a Delta jet like this. And then just sink it in. It's not hard to do at all. There you go. So you know, weird combo of pulling in like this at an angle. You use some rudder, throttle to sink it in a little slower. And that's all there is to it, guys. So is this jet, um, you know, is it good? Yeah. Is it $700 good? I'm a little on the fence about that. I don't regret spending the money I spent on it. It's really good. It's just not flying as good as I want it to. And I'm sad that I have to add more tail weight to get it to do that. Brake deployed. I wish I didn't have to. Four minutes, 22.44 volts. 
And it looks like something came off of the plane. So let's take a look at it and see what it was that came off. It would be the first instance of any any issues that I've seen on this jet. So let's see what came off. It looks like the landing gear door got messed up a little bit. Um, probably from some of that debris that it might have hit back there. Not a big deal, I don't think. It might be an easy fix. It might just pop back on. Some of these free wing things are pretty easy to resolve. It looks like it's the landing light or something of that nature. Let's pick it up and flop it over and take a look at it. Yeah, it just actually popped out of its socket here is all what happened. So the landing light is totally fine, but that's something that's gonna happen potentially on grass over time. It's just like a simple mechanism. It actually just pops in and out and it's held on, interestingly enough, by this little component right here. So this hooks on to a little spot right here next to the L. So if I can get this on there with one hand, I will show you guys how to fix it real easy. So we just slide that into that little hook. I'm sure you probably can't see it because Liz is having a hard time getting in there. Tiny spaces, man. Tiny spaces, man. Yep, you're not wrong. And then just pop that back onto the, actually it's in the wrong spot. It needs to be in a different spot. Rotate it over, here we go. And pull it in like this. You got it in there? And then rotate it and then it pops on right there. Now the landing gear door is back on. Now I just need to push this landing gear wire back in with my fingernail into, into that little clevis that it's kind of holding it in place and it's good to go. Perfect. Um, overall, final verdict on this thing. It is, for the price, atrocious that the landing gear take as long as they do to go in and out. It is, to me, un completely unacceptable. It should not take 30 seconds to cycle these landing gear. Freewing, you guys need to get your craft together on this. This is unacceptable this day and age. How much money I had to spend to get this jet to have landing gear cycles take that long? I actually had to go to rclightsystems.com and pick up a channel expander so I can get my 10 channel to run the gear doors as extra channels so that I could get around that, that problem uh, and sequence them myself. Everything else is really good. The servos were actually pretty good. I didn't feel compelled, compelled to replace them out of the box like I often do with freewing jets. The canards are still using the stock servos. So you can hear them. They're a little whiny, but they're not bad. You can see they control pretty well in the sky. I did replace the uh, Elevon servos with D85MGs, which is what, not what I did on the first flight. That was completely stock. They're so quiet, you can't even hear them compared to the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the canards. The landing gear, I still maintain, these are the best landing gear I think I've ever seen on a model jet. The F-16 80 millimeter from E-Flight is right behind it. Um, there is no arguing with this. This is like solid metal. It's actually painted for once. Freewing actually did that. Uh, before we finally get into our last review score of this thing, because this is going to be the final review, the next time we fly, it's going to be on the comparison between this and the Rafale. Uh, the jets, where the, um, the wing connectors are here that this this screws into, that little screw screws into. This did actually not, this part right here did not come with a uh, threaded insert, the brass collar that those screws thread into. I had to buy some for myself on Amazon and then install them myself. That's also unacceptable. It was only this one. The rest of them were fine, but that's a QC issue. And it makes me wonder what else is wrong with this jet. But in fairness, this is one of the best goddamn jets I've ever flown. In terms of flying, this is really, really good. So I maintain it is still a solid nine and a half Nine and a half out of 10. I had to burp and talk at the same time. It never really works out great that way, does it? Nine and a half out of 10. And you wanna know why I think that? Because there is no finer Delta flying experience for the most part. I still think right now that if I was to take the FMS Rafale out and pit it against this, the Rafale would fly circles around it because it's so much more agile, because they actually gave it the full span elevons. Like this should move. This should not be a fixed piece. I wish that was like, why can FMS do that but Freewing can't? That bugs me especially for 700 bucks. The Rafale costs less, but Rafale's canards don't even move anywhere near as much as this. So there's some drawbacks there too. And the gear on the, on the Rafale aren't as good as this. So that's my thoughts on this, nine and a half out of 10. I think you guys should get it. I bought mine from rccastle.com and you should too. See you guys again next time. With the CG shifted back beyond 40 millimeters from the wing marks, this jet takes off and lands significantly better. We would go as far as to consider the 28 grams of weight in the tail and removing the pilot figure to be a requirement if you want the most out of this jet. If you're adventurous enough, you can cut out even more foam and push the weight further back to keep the wing loading as low as possible while getting the center of gravity pushed even further back. 
This jet most likely needs to balance at 60 millimeters to fly neutrally, which is what you'll want if you're looking for a jet that doesn't fight your control inputs. The jet has only one small critical flaw in that its gear cycle is atrocious and unacceptable in 2023, but you can use a channel expander to sequence it yourself and fix that issue. The next vid we'll show on Eurofighter covers the comparisons between it and the FMS Rafal 80mm now that it's set up with a channel expander. Look out for that soon in a new upload, but for now, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and let us know what you think in the comments.